Hello everybody and good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Palm Tree Sports. My name is Corey Pujols, your host, and it's brought to you by IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And guys, again, happy Saturday. I hope your weekend's going well. We got a lot to talk about in today's episode, so we're going to try and keep it smooth and simple. However, with the NFL draft going on right now, Well, nothing's ever going to be smooth and simple, right, when you're picking new players for your football team. And that's what's going to be the focus of today's episode here on episode 30 of Palm Tree Sports, guys. I'm so blessed to have this opportunity to be here and be able to discuss these things with with you guys in the chat as well. So I look forward to the input. And if you guys don't mind, um, you know, giving me a follow or or coming over to Twitter, Instagram, wherever you guys may be at and give me a shout out. Let me know that you're enjoying the show, that you're enjoying the content that we're bringing to you every week. We do this every week at 6 p.m guys uh same time same place and we're going to cover like i said all the major sports all the current events going on here in florida but with that being said like i said the biggest thing going on right now is going to be the draft and that's what we're going to talk about that's what we're going to focus on and that's where we're going to get started all right so first things first uh we're going to go ahead and start with tampa bay uh tampa bay is the home team if you will for for uh yours truly i was born and raised in tampa florida my entire life so uh, i actually used to live right down the street from the buck stadium i now moved to brandon so i'm out here uh kicking it it's, it's nice out here it's a lot more quiet um than it is uh in the center of the city however with the draft going on, like I said, there's a lot of noise being made. Some of that noise is being made essentially by the offensive and defensive line. So it seems like there's been a, a primary focus for the Buccaneers is to take care of Baker Mayfield and make sure that he has all the opportunities to utilize uh, his talents on offense as much as possible. And that's more never been more evident than now, seeing the players that we've picked in the draft. I'm going to go ahead and run these names down to you guys, so that way you have an idea of what the Buccaneers are working with. So, in the first round of the NFL Draft 2023... Uh, the Buccaneers selected Kalijah uh, Kansi from uh, Pittsburgh. He's a defensive tackle. A lot of great tape. He's built. If you watched the NFL draft of, of day one, they talked about the comparison to Aaron Donald. And we'll have to wait and see how that translates because obviously those are big shoes to feel. However... It's a blessing to have somebody of that caliber and somebody that played in the same system from the same alma mater as him uh, to be able to join this team. And hopefully he can be the difference uh, at that on that defensive line position that sometimes struggled last year against the run a couple of times. So that was a big pickup for our round one. Uh, I have no complaints with the choice. Obviously, Tampa Bay was going to need a lot of work on both the offensive and defensive line, more so defensive line than offensive line because of the rotation of guards and tackles that we do have. So with that being said, I'm very pleased with this pick uh, in the first round. We'll just have to see if that can translate on the field. Of course, we've seen uh, a lot of players in the first round not really live up to their hype. In the last few years, and that's just something that I hope that Tampa Bay is able to avoid, especially with a pick uh, like Kansi again at defensive tackle. Him plus Vita Vey is going to be absolutely insane, and don't forget Shaquille Mace, uh, Shaquille Mason. Ha, we lost Shaquille Mason actually uh, in the off season, but Shaq Barrett will be returning back from injury. Uh, from his torn Achilles. So if he can return back to form, this defense should be able to be as scary as it once was a couple of years ago. Uh, it, obviously, there's still going to be a little bit more work that needs to be done. And let's just hope we can continue to address that through the draft, especially with the, the amount of potential that's going to be in the undrafted free agency for defense this year. Uh, obviously, the first round of the NFL draft this year was, was catered to uh, a lot more offense than defense with the uh, three of the first five picks being quarterbacks. So, you know, that's always a big deal whenever that, uh, whenever you see that kind of thing. And just a quick shout out to the University of Florida. Congratulations to Anthony Richardson heading over to Indianapolis. I'm very proud of him, especially for him to be able to go in the first round. Indianapolis got a wonderful talent in him, and they uh, hopefully will make the most out of it. If not, there are plenty of other teams that would like to have a crack at a guy with that type of talent and that type of arm strength. Now, uh, back to the Buccaneers. Uh, in the second round, uh, Cody Mouch, I believe his, is how you pronounce his last name, is was drafted. He's an offensive tackle from San Diego State University. And just the first look at this guy, he looks like a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He looks like a pirate. Uh, he looks like he can get down in the trenches and handle business. He reminds me of Ryan Jensen when you look at him. I believe he goes 6'7", 302 pounds. So he's a big guy. Uh, a lot of 
um, maneuverability for a big guy as he also ran a good 40 time for his NFL combine. So that's also something very respectable. Um, and real quick, back to Canty, he had the fastest uh, time by defensive tackle in the draft. So that's also something that turned on Tampa Bay as well as his build and ability uh, to get into the back foot and blow plays up. So obviously you can see the trend there, especially when you move on to round three where we picked up Yaya Di, uh, Di, Di, uh, B. I don't know how to say his last name. It's D-I-A-B-Y. Um, and he's a defensive end from Louisville. So that guy, he's probably going to end up splitting time with Joe Troyan Shoyanka, for those who remember. Um, we drafted him two years ago, and he really came along, especially last year. He, he definitely showed a lot of explosive playability and uh, the ability to shut down you know, the outside of the field as far as the edge is concerned. So that's something that's always been a big concern uh, for Tampa Bay. If you guys have followed Tampa Bay over the last 15, almost 20 years now, you'll notice that one thing that we really struggled with was the edge. Whenever teams were able to get to the edge on us or specifically run to the edge, uh, D would be excellent. Gotcha. And whenever, whenever you have players who are good at getting to the edge they were always able to help spread out the defense which in turn made Tampa Bay move from a Tampa 2 defense to playing man with a cover 2 safety at the top and whenever you do that you lose to the mid range in the short passing game which is the fundamental aspect of primary primarily used in offenses these uh, these days and especially over the last few years when you look at uh, Tom Brady for instance who lived and died by the play action when the play action was there Oh, yeah, we were number one offense in the league. Well, not number one offense in the league, but Tom Brady's the number one quarterback in the league. He's leading the league in touchdowns, leading the league in passing yards, and he's 45, you know, Brazilian years old. So when you ask yourself, how does that happen? Well, that's where it starts, okay? And, and, uh,. <clears throat> Excuse me, my apologies, you guys, but Yaya is going to bring that element to the edge that we may have been lacking and something that we've struggled to keep up with, especially with uh, with Shaq Barrett going down to injury last year, which, again, you know, you could tell that that really hurt the team a lot because the guy is just absolutely a monster. And we're hoping that with this type of debt, we're able to replicate that. And Shaq is also, you know, a leader. Uh, he's definitely going to be able to teach these guys the ins and outs of the abilities that he has. And whichever abilities rub off on them, we'll be able to see it pay off on Sundays. That's something that I firmly believe in. Now, going into round four, which we didn't have a pick, that led us right to round five where we had two picks. And the first pick went to uh, Seer. Oh, my bad, Seer. Uh, Sire, my bad. Uh, last name, Dennis. He's a linebacker out of Pitt. And... Siavassier, there we go. That's his name. Gotcha. Dennis. And he's a linebacker out of Pitt, as I mentioned. Pitt has a very strong uh front seven, if you will, and they've always had a strong front seven. That's a team that historically they've been able to pump out big men, both on offense and defense. So that's O line, D line, but that also includes linebackers. This guy's pretty fast on the ball. He's got a nose for it. And it's something that you look for in a linebacker. Now, as far as where he's going to fit in the draft board or we'll definitely see how that you know rotates down especially with the rumors of or not rumors but the want behind Devin White um there's a strong possibility that this guy may see a lot of playing time especially if Devin White continues on the trend that he's been going on with that being said I'm hoping that Devin gets his act together and doesn't hold out or anything like that but it's necessary to draft a linebacker this was where that pick came from so I wouldn't be surprised if he finds himself with playing time this year obviously it's all going to depend on what's going on with Devin White and Levante David. So it's good to have that pick right there in the back pocket. Now with the second fifth round pick, we picked up tight end uh, Payne Durham. He's from Purdue. Uh, that's that's a big guy who can catch the football. And I, I think at some point in time as Tampa Bay fans, we all realized they were going to have to pick up a tight end, another tight end. Uh, the tight ends that we had last year were <sighs> underwhelming. Obviously had good moments, strong moments throughout the year. However, with Tom Brady's offense running through his tight ends primarily to open up his receivers, it's one of those things that we weren't able to see a lot of success in as we had seen with the past two years with Gronk and even O.J. Howard in the Super Bowl year, if you guys remember him. Now, like I said, I expected this pick to come through. I won't say it came at the best time. I would say that perhaps there were a couple of other better players on the board to pick up on. However... It is what it is. Uh, I'm also slightly biased, so I was hoping that maybe, uh, you know, Tampa uh, Tampa Bay would make a push for, for one of the Gators, whether it be Ventro Miller or uh, Amui Diabate, but unfortunately, neither one of those guys were there at the time, so it is what it is. 
Again, the pick is an overall solid pick, something that I expected uh, from the beginning of the draft, especially to go after a tight end, knowing that the tight end room was pretty small at the moment. So, now we move on to the sixth round, where again, Tampa Bay had a couple extra picks there. I believe we had three sixth-round draft picks today. Uh, with the first sixth-round draft pick, we picked up Josh Hayes. He's a defensive back out of Kansas State. Uh, he's, a, he's a long guy, you know, big guy, something with uh, a good amount of speed for... Uh, for the defense that he played in. So a lot of people understand, you watch college football, Kansas State's never been the primary focus, but they played some decent football last year that was behind some good defense. They were in some games that they had no business being in, which is something that's very impressive. So when you pick up a guy like that, you just look that the ceiling, you know, the, the ceiling has like no distance from where this guy started, right? Like you, you guys have the ability to mold him into something special. Uh, and then obviously we were going to need a cornerback anyway. So it was only a matter of time before one of the guys came off the board at cornerback for Tampa Bay. Hopefully we can do our best to replicate the success that we had with some of the other players that we drafted, uh, Jamel Dean, uh, Carlton Davis, if you remember those guys. So hopefully we're going to be able to replicate the success with this young man. He'll be able to get into that lineup and make a true impact, a true difference for us uh, You know, sometime early in the season because I'm pretty sure we're going to need him. Moving down to the very next six-round draft pick, it was going to be Trey Palmer, wide receiver in Nebraska. This guy's also a very good ball player. Now receivers, uh, usually if they don't go early in the first round, they're scattered throughout the rest of the draft, right? So like, in other words, basically what I'm saying is you have a bunch of great receivers and the teams that need their receivers are going to go for their receivers early, and after that, you're going to start to see receivers drop, which is kind of a necessary thing just because there's a plentiful amount of receivers in most cases of the draft. I don't think there's been a draft in recent memory where there weren't um, enough receivers for teams that need it. So with that being said, I do believe that we missed the opportunity to get, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Keyshawn Diabate from LSU. That guy, again, as a Gator, I had the, the joy of watching him consistently every year since the Gators play LSU every year. And that was one of the guys that I feel like slipped a lot. He's a very explosive receiver. So here hoping that Trey Palmer is somebody that can actually be better. Uh, and, and we'll just have to wait and see because he played at Nebraska. Nebraska's in some scary hours right now for those who follow, follow college football. They're in a really weird space and they're in a space that they're not used to being in. That's a college that's used to winning and winning consistently. So hopefully he can come on. He can make a big difference for us. Uh, we're going to need him, especially with the depth that we lost during the offseason over the last two years at receiver. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens there. I wish him the best of luck, and hopefully he can come. He's going to play good ball. With the last pick in the sixth round that I saw, we picked up Jose Ramirez, who's an edge rusher. Uh, he's from Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan's a good college, a uh, very underrated college. They pump out players, and we're just going to have to see how, how he fits in. Now, that's going to give us quite a few options at edge now, which is uh, basically what I was expecting Jason Light to do, especially knowing that the defense was going to be uh, – Definitely lacking. So is the offense, but the defense is more, a slightly more important because we have the quarterback, at least for this year. So, and like I said, it became clear early on that the goal was to protect Baker Mayfield and get him as many opportunities as possible, which is the reason for all the defensive picks. Uh, in order for the offense to have a chance, the defense has to do their job, and that was something that they, you know, struggled with a lot throughout the season. If you look at the games that Tampa Bay played, there were a lot of close games, and those games that weren't close, we've got we got blew out, right? Like we got blown out. Defense didn't show up, offense didn't show up, nobody showed up. So that in order to rectify that, you got to start with the defense first, obviously, uh, knowing that you have the centerpieces that you have on offense, Mike Edwin, uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Um, you see what I'm saying? Like we have players that that can get the job done. Um, you know, White and now Baker Mayfield. So hopefully we're able to uh, continue the trend of early success with this young talent, and we'll just have to go from there. Obviously, it's going to be too early to, to uh, you know, guess on what's going to happen for the Buck season. But I will tell you this. I do expect a lot out of Canty. I expect a lot out of Cody and Yaya. The first three round picks look like really solid players and could find themselves into the starting rotation. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Uh, Josh Hayes and Trey Palmer both interest me a lot as well. And so does Payne Durham. I'm hoping that he can come in and he can help fill some type of void left by Cam Brake and Gronkowski. Now, that was it for Tampa Bay. Let's move on because I want to go ahead and cover all these before the first break. So I want to go ahead and get into the Jaguars next. Uh, the Jaguars, similar to Tampa Bay, was going to need a lot more help on defense than offense. Uh, they have their quarterback for the future and a phenomenal talent in Lawrence. And I, I just, you know, I pray that he stays healthy in order to utilize these players that they're acquiring. Now, it looks like the Jags had a bunch of picks 
And I think they had the most picks out of all the teams in Florida. So we're going to go ahead and whiz through these real quick. In the first round, they went with offensive tackle from Oklahoma, Anton Harrison. This guy is a very big body up front. He could find himself in the starting rotation immediately. I wouldn't be surprised. Also because this was something that they were going to have to work on as well. In order to keep your young quarterback healthy, you're going to have to have a good offensive line. And a good offensive line needs to be coachable and well-trained at a good age. And this young guy... You know, coming fresh out of college, uh, he's only 24 years old, I believe it is. So it's he's perfect age to fit right into the mold. Hopefully, he can learn a lot from some of the veterans on the OT over there in Jacksonville, Duval County, and we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. But I fully do expect this guy to become a starter. He was a phenomenal talent in Oklahoma, and was part of the reason why they were able to run the ball and, more importantly, throw the ball, which is important, especially when you're playing teams like Texas, when you're playing teams, you know, in the South that are just rugged and they're going to get after you. So. Anton Harrison, first round, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. For the second round, they go Bretton Strange, who's a tight end out of Penn State. Uh, Penn State knows how to pump out good tight ends, so I wouldn't be surprised if this guy also finds himself into the starting you know, block, especially with the question mark around Ingram. Now, I know he was looking for a big contract, and he stay, he still may very well get it, but that's going to leave the other side of tight end wide open, and who's going to fill that position? Brent Strange just like he'll be the guy. Good pickup for you guys. Definitely another weapon to add to Lawrence's toolbox and something he should be able to take advantage of. Now, moving on to the third round, they go Tank Bigsby running back Auburn. This guy is basically what his name suggests he is a tank. He's a, he's a small tank, but he's a good tank, and he's the type of tank that you want on your team. A uh, guy knows how to run between the tackles. He's got decent speed. Um, I, I watched him a little bit in Auburn, so I'm not surprised that uh, that Jacksonville took him. Great choice is going to give you a third round, um, third down back options out of the backfield. A uh, good pass catcher as well. So he, you know, obviously every running back should work on their pass catching skills. Marshall Falk taught us the value of that. Uh, you know, especially when you're in a high flying offense, right? So and that's something that the Jacksonville Jaguars look to be next year, especially with all the the money that they spent in the offseason last year. Something I'm always going to harp on because here, hoping that in year two it'll pay off and pay dividends for them. Now. Moving over to the fourth round, Mr. Ventro Miller, which is a linebacker out of Florida. I mentioned him earlier, phenomenal linebacker. He, he's good in space. He hits hard, and he's a great leader. So I'm very happy with um, Jacksonville picking up Ventro Miller. This is going to be great for their team. He could be a starter for them. Uh, it wouldn't, I wouldn't surprise me if he starts week one. Like I said, tremendous leadership, tremendous ball skills, and he can read the quarterback pretty well. As long as the defense stays home and does their job, he'll be able to lead that defense properly within a few years. I'm confident. Uh, also in the fourth round, they picked up Tyler Lacey, who's a defensive end from Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is a hit and miss college when it comes to talent. They've produced a lot of talent but that talent has come scattered over the last 20 years, and it's one of those things where when they do produce a good player, they turn out to be, uh, you know, a Super Bowl caliber performing, you know, talent. So we're going to have to see if Tyler Lacey can turn out to be one of those guys off the defensive end position. Like I said, out of Oklahoma State, he's going to have a lot to live up to, especially when you're playing on a team that is rebuilding their defense to be properly, you know, suited, especially for their division where they run a lot in that uh, in the AFC South. So. And that's something that they're going to need, and hopefully he can live up to the hype. Uh, moving on to round five, Yasir Abdullah, linebacker out of Louisville. As I mentioned before, they're trying to reinvigorate that defense. They're trying to make sure that they're able to stop the run properly. Uh, that's one of the things that, that they rely on heavily in the, in the AFC South. So it's one of it's very important that, uh, that it gets done properly, right? Playing defense gets done properly, and uh, we'll have to wait and see if these guys can, like I said, Live up to the hype. I suspect that they will. Jacksonville has a good coaching staff, and they've been very doing very well the last few years, especially after the addition to Lawrence. And hopefully, they can do the, you know, the best that they can in in stopping that run. Like I said, which was definitely something that held them back a little bit last year. So, uh, with that being said, uh, Barry Sanders, OSU. I think he was it. Um, if I'm searching through my memory banks, I think it was OSU. It was either OSU or Stanford. I think it was OSU. I can't remember off the top of my head. That was quite a while ago. But somebody look that up and put that in the chat, will you? Uh, where did Barry Sanders go to college? And put that in the chat when you guys find it, please and thank you. Um, continue on, though, with the Jaguars in their fifth round. They did have a, they did have a second pick. So in the fourth round, they had two picks. Fifth round, two picks. Uh, and then, obviously, in the third round, they got, uh, or my bad, in the sixth round, they had three picks, followed by two seventh round picks, which will be tomorrow. So, uh, or today, my apologies, later today. With that first pick, um, 
my apologies, not the first pick. The second pick in the fifth round, Antonio Johnson, safety, Texas A&M. Antonio Johnson is a lengthy guy at safety, a little bit bigger than most safeties, so uh, he should be able to perform well, especially in the backfield, knowing that the, the up front they're going to be dogmatic about getting to the game pass and line of scrimmage, stopping the ball carries in the back. Like I said, it's something that they'll have to work on, but we knew they were going to go defense heavy in this draft for Jacksonville. So that's just another stud for them to add into that that area. I suspect they'll also be doing something um, in free agency as well, uh, especially before the trade deadline. They're going to need another safety. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to get on the market for somebody else as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if they use draft picks to do it, especially having as many that they had this year. Now, moving into the sixth round, all right, as we keep on going on. Uh, now, Parker Washington is a wide receiver from Penn State. Again, Penn State is definitely – been pumping out good talent at tight end and wide receiver position the last couple years really the last 10 or 12 years I would say they've been the hallmark for being able to pick up pass catchers okay Mike Gusecki Chris Godwin just to name a couple okay and obviously so on and so on this is just another big name coming out of Penn State in the sixth round I feel like this guy could possibly have been a steal uh, he's got very he's, he's a short guy but he's got explosiveness and a lot of power for, for his weight. So this is something that we'll have to wait and see how he develops. He could find himself as a slot receiver, and if he does, that could be potentially exactly what Lawrence was missing in the offense, especially having Ingram and talented wide receivers like Christian Kirk. So we'll have to uh, see, how again, how that shakes out, where he ends up in the depth chart, but don't be surprised if he finds himself in the slot uh, on opening day. Now, for the second pick that they had in the sixth round, Christian Brazewell, Brazewell he's a cornerback out of Rutgers, as I mentioned earlier. We knew that the Jaguars were going to go heavy defense. They needed to go heavy defense, and I'm glad that they did that, picking up a bunch of talent, guys that they're going to be able to throw in there against some NFL-caliber players that they already have on their team just to see where they're at and see what kind of uh, production they can create, which is exactly what you're going to need out of the young guys, okay? So... I wish the Jaguars the best of luck, especially as they continue on into the draft. Right now, the team that's picking is the Cowboys. So we got a little bit more ways to go before we see the next pick coming out of the Jacksonville Jaguars. But uh, until then, you know, just keep on following the draft uh, and, and we'll see who they pick up. And I'll be able to talk a little bit more about that next week once we once they finalize their draft picks, especially with their undrafted free agency, um, you know, options that are still out there as well, which we've seen a lot of maneuverability after the draft with teams that say, hey, you know, they're going to draft here and they draft, you know, what they need, but still they need more. Right. Like, for instance, we've seen teams who needed receivers. They have to wait till, you know, the undrafted you know, guys come out and, and then pick up from there. And there's been a lot of talent there too, guys, so don't sleep on undrafted players. Lastly, before we get into our first break, we're going to talk about the Finns. The Finns go last simply because they have the least amount of picks out of the teams in Florida. Uh, they only had four picks in this year's draft, second, third, sixth, and seventh. We haven't seen their seventh round pick yet, so I'm going to go ahead with their first couple of picks. The first pick in the second round was to Cam Smith. He's a cornerback out of South Carolina. Saw this guy play myself. He's got good cover skills. Uh, he definitely has a nose for the football, and he could potentially be exactly what the Finns are missing on the opposite side of having the two uh, world-class cornerbacks that they already have. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. And aside from that, another thing we knew that they needed was going to be a running back. Enter round three, Devon Aiken is the running back they chose out of Texas A&M. Also saw this guy play. This guy ripped a couple of long ones last year, so he's somebody to keep an eye on. I'm not sure if he's going to find himself in the starting position on day one, but he'll definitely be working for it, and we'll see what his production takes him. We'll just have to wait uh, until, you know, pra uh, you know, practice, summer practices, starting OTAs, all that good stuff. Um, they'll All the rookies are going to have to, it's mandatory for them, so they have no choice but to be there. So look forward to that, and look forward to the work they're going to put in. Now, in the sixth round, Elijah Higgins was picked. Wide receiver Stanford. This guy also is a guy that kind of slipped a little bit further down. Well, obviously, there's just not a whole bunch of teams in the market for receiver at the moment. And uh, because of that, you're going to have a lot of that talent that drops down. This guy actually has a lot of big playability. He didn't get to play a ton at Stanford, but he will be able to here in the NFL, especially on the Dolphins side of things, who we knew they were going to need to get a receiver. In the seventh round, I wouldn't be surprised if they go cornerback or receiver again. So keep an eye out on that for the Dolphins. But yeah, overall, the three picks that they had, good solid picks. I think I agree with all three of these picks, especially for Miami. They did the right thing as far as picking up um, in positions that they need. Uh, I look forward to seeing, like I said, what they get into the seventh round, and 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 we'll have to just go from there. Uh, and it looks like, okay, so the Jacks picked on, on uh, 226. They got Cooper Hodgins, okay, Hodges. And then they got at 227, Raymond... 
Vohasek. Okay, interesting. All right, cool. So there are the other two picks so far from the sixth round of the Jaguars. Again, when I got my notes finished, it was you know a little bit before uh, we had gotten to that point in the draft. But uh, again, for those who are watching the draft, keep on you know feeding that information in uh, to the chat. Again, if if you guys happen to see what the Dolphins pick in round seven or any of the other picks from the Jaguars for that matter, go ahead and throw those into the chat for those who are looking. I have the draft on, but it's muted at the moment. Obviously, I don't want it to overrule what's going on here on the, on, on the podcast. Speaking of podcasts, I want to say thank you guys again for joining me here on Palm Tree Sports. My name is Corey Pujols, your host, and it's brought to you by Esports Radio. Keep it locked here. I'll be back in two minutes. What's good, fight fans? It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy awesome. White tea. <laughs> we are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Hey, USRN fans, do you have a product or company you're trying to promote? Look no further. USRN is teaming up with small local businesses trying to establish themselves via online promotion. Let us know if you're interested. Email us at usrnradio at gmail.com to learn more. Well, welcome back to Palm Tree Sports, guys. Again, my name is Corey Pujols, your host, and as always, is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. All right, guys, well, thank you for sticking me, uh, sticking with me through that very tense opening segment that we had, of course, covering the NFL Draft. A lot of new names, a lot of new faces for a lot of new teams. So uh, it's going to be a world of young players soon. Um, Tom Brady has already retired, so with the draft being as big as it is this year and, and forthcoming drafts to be with especially all the talent that's in college football right now. For those who watch college football, you know what I'm talking about. There is going to be a lot of fresh faces, and soon the entire old guard will be removed and will be replaced by a lot of young cats. Now, with that being said, it's time to also move on away from the game of football and let's move into some of the other things because contrary to the draft's beliefs, there still is playoff basketball, there's playoff NHL hockey, there's the beginning to the baseball season, and there's also a UFC fight night tonight. So let's get into those things real quick and we're going to go ahead and breeze through them. Again, as I said, this was going to be a highly draft focused uh, you know, show today and we've already covered that. So with the NBA... All right, for all my Heat fans out there, guys, congratulations. Uh, I met, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago on what the Heat needed to do to close out the Bucks, and they did exactly that. Well, they did 95% that. I'm going to start with the elephant in the room, and by elephant, I mean the, the, the big red fuming elephant, and that would be that Victor Oladipo is hurt again. And I always mention this about the Heat. If they can stay healthy, 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 listen. Eric Spolscher is a top five coach in the NBA right now, okay? And for anybody saying that he's not, it's because they're trying to give credit to these young guys who are up and coming and they've got all these great ideas. That's wonderful. I'm not taking anything away from them. Eric Spolscher has been leading that team for almost 20 years now, all right? Like, he's literally been doing this for a long time, and he's been phenomenal at it, okay? Let's not call and sell him short. All right. He's been phenomenal at the head coaching position for Miami and what he's been able to do for that team and that franchise in general is nothing short of turning them around. Okay. So I'm a huge fan of him, first and foremost. And secondly, I just, you know, want to send out my condolences to Victor. 
he suffered a, a knee injury in Game 3. It was a Game 3 win, but it, it's not a win when every one of your guys goes down like that. So he just had surgery on his knee. We're just, you know, praying and hoping for a good recovery for him. There's no timetable when he's going to be able to return. I believe it was patella tendon surgery. So that's not something that you're just going to be back from in a couple of weeks. It's just not one of those things. So, guys, uh, let's just send our prayers out to him, and hopefully he gets better. Now, <clears throat> that was the veggies. Let's get to the meat, guys. Here's the meat. The Heat closed out the number one seed at Bucks in five games. Sensational. All right, absolutely ridiculous. Gotta love it. And how did they do it? Well, JB, baby. Jimmy Butler's a... And he said it's not a thing. He said it's not a playoff thing. I don't know, JB. 56 points. 56 points against the one-seeded Bucks. Good work, bro. Good work. I'm very glad to see him playing at a high level. Um, I mentioned that if they were going to beat the Bucks, that he was going to have to be sensational. He's been nothing short of sensational. Adding the three ball to his mid-range game, which has already been potent and destructive. And as you guys have seen, if JB can go off and they can play defense and he's hitting the three ball, they're maybe the best team in the Eastern Conference right now. All right, And I'm saying that with full conviction. All right, If they play like that against everybody, it's going to be them. At alone at the top and that that unless there's there's just one team there's just one person okay that might have something to say about that it's just one but he's in the west so we're not going to talk about him and we're not going to talk about that team right now even though they just you know closed out the two seated grizzlies and you know but anyway that's neither here or there that's neither here or there uh congratulations to the lakers as well but now the uh, the Heat move on to the Eastern Conference semifinals, and they will be playing against the Knicks. That series starts tomorrow, 1 p.m., so if you're looking for something to watch early afternoon, here's your first what to watch on Sunday, 1 p.m. All right, guys, Knicks, Heat. If the Heat play just like they did against the Bucks, they'll close out the Knicks in five as well. All right, my, my prediction is going to be six. All right, my prediction is going to be six. But let's go Miami Heat. I believe in you guys. We all believe in you, the whole city of Miami, the whole state of Florida. Very proud of you guys, and just continue on doing what you're doing. And JB, just light it up, baby. Just light it up. Do what you guys got to do. Uh, now, let's, like I said, we're going to breeze through these last couple of parts, guys. So let's move on to the NHL. NHL, we have the Bolts. Now, our beloved Bolts, they're struggling against the Maple Leafs, but they were able to tighten the series at three games to two by a 4-2 to victory. Uh, uh, was it last night? I believe it was. last. No, uh, two nights ago, my apologies, uh, against the Maple Leafs in game five to force a game six. That game six is tonight at 7 p.m. So here's your second, uh, you know, what to watch for tonight. We've got NHL playoff hockey, uh, Bolts, Maple Leafs, game six. Like I said, 7 p.m. tonight, if you're going to be looking, I'm going to be bouncing between that and also the Rays game. We'll get into that in a second. And then obviously ESP, uh, ESPN's UFC's fight night. So uh, there's going to be quite a bit to watch. I always love it when there's a lot of stuff to watch, especially in the football offseason and knowing that the draft is still going on is just a plus. Basically, what I'm saying is, guys, as a sports fan, there's no reason for us to be hanging our hats on, on the shortage of football because we got plenty of other stuff going on. Uh, so, again, the Bolts, they, they're tight at the series, three games to two to force the game six. They're going to have to play tremendous defense, so they're going to have to play tremendous offense just as they've been doing uh, throughout the season. They're just going to have to find a way to do that consistently tonight. They were able to win by two goals uh, last uh, uh, last night, so hopefully they can do that again and replicate that to force a game seven and winner take all move on to the next round. Uh, good luck to our Bolts. We love you guys. You guys have made us extremely proud, and if this is the end of the road, we say thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for three amazing years and a fourth year that almost you know, added to that, that legacy uh, of what is the uh, Tampa Bay Bolts, uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, a.k.a. the Bolts. So, again, good luck tonight, guys. We believe in you. Uh, go crush the Maple Leafs, force a game seven, and let's wrap this series up on Monday, right? If they are able to force a game seven, uh, that game will be played on Monday at uh, 1 p.m., and that's the first, May 1st, guys. So that won't be a what to watch until after the, the Bolts win game six to force the game seven. All right, guys? And like I said, good luck, Bolts. Now, moving in to the hottest team in all of Florida right now and the hottest team in all of baseball right now. Let's talk about the Rays, guys. This team I can't say enough about, okay? Uh, Brandon Lau, Brandy and Rosarino both look like MVPs, all right? They're they're nutcases. They are absolutely going crazy this year. When I tell you it's been a treat for this last month, 
well, almost month and a half, soon to be month and a half, to be a Rays fan, let me tell you, they have been making this city proud. Setting records and breaking records left and right. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what's going on currently. The Rays are 22-5. and five. Again, the hottest team in baseball. Hottest team in baseball guys they're going against the White Sox unfortunately due to the Rays being one of the hottest teams or being the hottest team in baseball uh, a lot of these losses in the 7 to 20 record of the White Sox have come from Tampa Bay as I think we have beaten them one two three four five six seven times this year yeah so imagine that guys if you were to take the seven losses from the Rays alone and turn those into wins the White Sox record would be 14 and uh, 13 so yeah sorry Chicago not sorry, Chicago. Um, they play tonight at seven <laughs> and seven ten p.m. If you're looking to watch that game, I w- that will probably be my primary focus. Uh, for the record, you guys, I just want to put this out there just because we're almost done with the show. But uh, I'm getting we're starting to get a little bit more weather change. We have been in a tornado warning for the last few hours, so if something should happen, I get disconnected. Just so you know, all right. There's been a tornado warning going on for a while, uh, as many of you may know, living in uh, down here in Tampa, Florida, Brandon, Florida. We're very close to water everywhere, so you know what that means. That means tornadoes, hurricanes, uh, all kind of stuff, like just all water spouts, the whole nine yards. So, uh, if, and if we if I get cut off, it's because of that. If I don't, bless you know, bless our hearts, right? And so, but back into the to the swing of things, what's going on in Tampa? Like I said, seven ten p.m. is kickoff time for that game tonight. Uh, I can't say enough about the Rays right now, guys. 21 games straight to start a season with a home run, all right? I'm going to say that one more time. 21 games at the start of the season, every game played with a home run. That's an MLB record, guys, and uh, 22 would have been great, but hey, hey, look, we can't have everything we want, and that's okay because we got 22 wins, okay? And I'll take that as the hottest team in baseball continues to roll. And where are we headed? Well, we're on a two-game win streak. We got the White Sox one more time tomorrow at 2.10 p.m., so there's a what to watch for tomorrow afternoon along with the uh, the first game between the Knicks and the... Um, the Knicks and the Heat are also tonight. So, not tonight, tomorrow night. Or tomorrow afternoon, I should say. So, there's the what to watch for tomorrow afternoon. Tonight, for what to watch is going to be the Bolts and the Rays uh, originally played at 7 and 7, 10 p.m. respectively. So, again, those, both of those games are starting within 10 minutes of each other. So, be prepared for that. Tomorrow, you got a little bit more space. Um, the, the Heat play at 1, and then the Rays game starts at 2, 10 p.m. again. So, just be prepared for that, guys, to be flipping through the channels back and forth a little bit. That game tomorrow, again, is against the White Sox. So, if we wrap these two wins up, we'll be sitting at 24 and 5, which is the best record, uh, in the which will be the best record in the MLB, but also the best start for the Rays in franchise history as we continue to break those records ahead of time uh i think that they will go ahead and close out the white Sox in these next two games and then after that we've got a series against the pirates this is gonna be the true test for tampa bay when we play the pirates right the pirates are the second hottest team in baseball right now they're rocking a 19 and 8 record all right guys not too far off from where tampa bay is at no surprise there uh you know ever so often the pirates pull up you know and they're just playing tremendous baseball and which is what they're doing at the moment especially defensively uh i think that if the bolt if not the bolts if the rays can win two of these games against the pirates it will just elevate their confidence to such a level where they should be able to continue to cruise and coast hopefully right into the playoffs i know we're starting early to talk about that but i can't help it we got the hottest team in baseball guys it feels so good to say it let's go rays Let's go get these next two W's tonight and tomorrow afternoon. Let's get in the Pirates' face and let's make them hurt. All right? Make them hurt. Now, in outside news for the Rays, as far as, uh, you know, some of the, the talent that they've acquired recently, one, uh, um, Javi Guerrero from the Bruins is a reliever pitcher that we just acquired yesterday. We actually traded him to the Bruins last year for a, a player to be disclosed, which ended up being a minor league pitcher who we, uh, I believe we still have. However, we were able to reacquire him, and that was for either cash or for a player to be announced in the future. So we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. However, he in his original stunt with the race, he was a good reliever. Uh, he went 2-1 with a 380, 394 ERA. So 
Hopefully he can do a little bit better than that and, and, and become a little bit more helpful for us at the end game, which you guys know we don't necessarily struggle at, but we need to have a better rotation. So I believe that this pickup will help with that process. And hopefully the confidence that this team has right now can kind of flood his, you know, his mental and his emotional to where he's going to able to replicate what he's seeing from our guys. Of course, we're playing tremendous baseball at this time. And the only way it's going to continue is if everybody's on the same page. So good luck tonight, Rays. Good luck tomorrow. Uh, I believe in you guys. We all believe in you again. The city of Tampa, we're we're just we're we're just humming at what you guys have been able to do. Like I said, historical run so far for the Rays, and let's just see if they can continue doing it. I'm very very proud of him. Now, for the last part of the show, guys, we're gonna talk about what's going on tonight as far as uh you know the UFC world is concerned. We got some we got a fight night coming out of ESPN, which is going to be a showcase. So for those who do not know, and I'll keep this very simple, uh for in mixed martial arts, you have the big names, right, who sell the pay-per-views, and then you have the fight nights. The fight nights are primarily to, to determine two things, right? There could be a third, but the, the main two factors that, that are utilized behind fight nights are determining number one contenders. So there are a lot of fight nights that will be in position to set up for four months, six months down the road. Usually that's the time frame, four to six months down the road, a title shot. This is one of those situations. We have Song Ye Dong versus Ricky Simone. Song is a UFC vet. He's been here for quite a while. Uh, Ricky, he's got a, a much better record, but he has not been in as long. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes tonight. Um, there's not a lot to tell about both of these fighters. So this is where the showcase part uh, part comes in, and which is the second thing I want to mention. When you have a lot of young talent that the world hasn't seen yet, or people that may come from places that the world just doesn't have a national stage to sit on, uh, this is an example of that. So this is going to be a great showcase for a lot of fighters, a lot of young up-and-coming fighters more specifically in the UFC. So if you're looking for the future, this would be a great fight night to watch. I recommend watching it. I will be watching. I'll be dipping in and out of it myself uh, to see what's going on along with, along with the Rays and the uh, Bolts tonight. So... That'll be my third what to watch for tonight. UFC Fight Night Showcase. Uh, Ye Dong versus Simone. And again, uh, you know, it should be a good one. Got a lot of young guys out there. The UFC's put on a couple of bangers. Each of the last pay-per-views and Fight Nights have been phenomenal uh, shows. So we'll have to see how this one goes. But hopefully it goes well. That's it for tonight as far as what to watch. And as I mentioned, tomorrow we have NBA Basketball. The Heat and the Knicks start their first game of the Eastern Conference Semifinals. That'll be at 1 p.m. Followed by the Rays. Uh, which will be starting at 2.10 p.m. Again, that game is against the White Sox. So there's your what to watch for tomorrow afternoon when you're getting back from church or from breakfast or brunch, whatever the case may be. And, uh, guys, that's going to wrap it for this show. So I just want to say thank you again for joining me here on Palm Tree Sports. Again, my name is Corey Pujols. I am your host. And, as always, this is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports, guys. Uh, have a wonderful Sunday. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Spend time with your family. Uh, don't forget to, you know, just enjoy the time that we have. Uh, life is short. I'm gonna get. I'm always gonna say this at the end of my show. So I just, I just wish the best for all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here and just listen to me rant about what's going on in the world of sports down here in the Sunshine State. Next week we'll be back to our regular, uh, you know, performance as far as the show is concerned. We won't have to worry about covering completely just the draft, you know, for you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, um, and we'll be able to co- encompass a lot more of what's going on back in the world of sports. But again, thank you guys so much for locking it here uh, on Palm Tree Sports. I'll be back same time, same place next week. And again, if you guys want to reach out to me, talk anything sports, uh, I am, I'm a football virtuoso, but I also cover all the rest of the sports as well. And, I, you know, I can have a conversation there. Meet me over on Twitter, at Corey Pujols is my tag, or my name, I should say. Uh, it's always covered by my nickname, Channel, for those who have went, and then you see the name Channel, that's my nickname name uh so yeah you'll you'll see me there and also on instagram guys uh same same place if you guys at cory pools you'll find me there and you know like i said i'm always there talking about sports always talking about you know what's going on here in the world as far as uh you know the dirty south is concerned specifically florida i'm very proud of all the teams in the nfl draft and i look forward to talking more about what they're able to accomplish and again thank you so much guys have a wonderful weekend enjoy your time and i will see you guys same place same time next week have a wonderful evening peace